Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to demonstrate the gains we get from specialization and trade. In my demonstration I have two individuals, Mary and Simon. Mary can make at most 20 cricket bats or at most 40 bicycles and I've drawn her individual PPF here. I actually go through drawing Mary's PPF in another video, I'll link to it below if you would like to see that. Simon can make 15 cricket bats at most or he can make 45 bicycles at most and Simon's individual PPF is given down the bottom here. In my example, Mary and Simon work for eight hours and just to be really clear on the interpretation of these numbers in the table here, these numbers show how much production is possible given that Mary and Simon have eight hours. So if Mary spends all of her time on cricket bats, she can make 20. If she spends all of her time on bicycles, she can make 40. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the opportunity cost for each individual of producing each good. The reason why I'm going to do this is because I'm interested in finding out who has the comparative advantage, if anyone, in the production of which good. And this entails finding out who, if anyone, has a lower opportunity cost. And to do this, I'm going to start with Mary. Now I go through this method of finding opportunity costs in another video. Again, I'll just link to it below. But basically from our table here, we can see that if Mary makes 20 cricket bats, she essentially gives up 40 bicycles. I'm going to normalize this trade-off to one. So 20 over 20 is equal to one. I need to divide the other side though to keep the ratio, 40 over 20 is two. So you can see that the opportunity cost, so what I give up, what Mary gives up when she makes one cricket bat is equal to two bicycles. We can do the same process for bicycles. So if Mary makes 40 bicycles, well, she doesn't make 20 cricket bats. Normalizing that trade-off to one bicycle, so 40 over 40 is equal to one, 20 over 40 is equal to a half. And we see that Mary's opportunity cost of producing one bicycle is equal to half of a cricket bat. Let's have a look at Simon now. If Simon makes 15 cricket bats, he gives up 45 bicycles. So I'm going to divide both of these sides by 15. So, well, Simon, you can see here, gives up three bicycles each time he produces one cricket bat. Thinking about Simon's opportunity cost of producing one bicycle, so we divide both sides by 45. If Simon makes one bicycle, he gives up a third of a cricket bat. And what I hope you can see from our calculations here is that Simon actually has a comparative advantage in the production of bicycles because his opportunity cost of producing bicycles is lower than Mary's. Simon only gives up a third of a cricket bat when he makes one bicycle, but Mary gives up half. Mary has a comparative advantage in the production of cricket bats on the other hand because when she makes one cricket bat she only gives up two bicycles but Simon as you can see gives up three bicycles so Mary has that lower opportunity cost and that's Mary's comparative advantage in cricket bats. What I want to show from this example in order to demonstrate gains from trade is that if Mary and Simon specialize in the production of those goods in which they have a comparative advantage, so if Mary only produces cricket bats and Simon only produces bicycles, then our total productivity will increase and there exists a trade that allows Simon and Mary to consume a bundle of goods that is currently unavailable to them if they didn't trade, so a bundle that is outside their PPF. And the strategy I'm going to use to demonstrate these points is by comparing a situation of no specialization where neither Mary or Simon give any priority to producing either good over another. So they're not favoring the production of one good 
And this essentially means that they're spending half of their time making cricket bats and half of their time making bicycles, an equal uh, allocation of resources to each good. And I'm going to compare this scenario of essentially no specialization with full specialization, where Mary only makes cricket bats and Simon only makes bicycles. So I've got a new table here in purple, and this is going to record the pattern of production if Mary and Simon spend four hours making each good. So this is no specialization. Well, we know from our original table that if Mary spends all her time on cricket bats, she can make 20. So it follows that if she only spent half that time, so four hours, she could produce 10, right? We know that if Mary spent the whole eight hours on bicycles, she could make 40. And it follows that if she only spent four hours, so half that time making bicycles, then she could make 20. For Simon, if he spends eight hours making cricket bats, we know he can make 15. So if he spent four hours making cricket bats, well, 15 divided by two, he could make 7.5. In a similar manner for Simon, if he spends four hours producing bicycles, well, that would be 22.5 because we know in eight hours he can produce 45. So this table here shows the pattern of production if Mary and Simon just divided their time in half. On our PPFs, those points of production would be here. That's where they're producing. And if we assume that they consume what they produce, that or those bundles are their consumption as well. Let's now think about what would happen if Mary and Simon completely specialized in the production of those goods in which they have the comparative advantage. So we have a new table. Mary would only make cricket bats. So she would spend the whole eight hours on cricket bats. And we can see from our original table, that would mean she would make 20 cricket bats. Simon would only make bicycles. That would be 45 bicycles. So now what we're going to do is compare those two tables. And let's first think about our total production of each good in each situation. Well, when Mary and Simon didn't specialize, so they divided up their time 50-50, they made together in total 17.5 cricket bats, 10 from Mary and 7.5 from Simon. For bicycles, they made in total 42.5, Mary made 20 and Simon made 22.5. When we specialize, well, Mary made 20 cricket bats, and Simon made 45 bicycles. So we can see comparing each table that the number of cricket bats that we've been able to produce has increased from 17.5 to 20, and the number of bicycles that Mary and Simon were able to produce has increased from 42.5 to 45. So that's my first point. As a result of specialization, our total productivity has increased. So now let's then think about a possible trade between Mary and Simon. And what I'm looking for is a trade where both Mary and Simon become better off than they were compared to the scenario of no specialization. So when Mary wasn't specializing, she had 10 cricket bats. She has 20 if she specializes. Well, if she traded nine of those cricket bats, she would be left with 11, which is greater than 10. So she could potentially trade nine cricket bats and still be better off than if she didn't specialize. Likewise, Simon had 22.5 bicycles when he didn't specialize. He has 45 if he specializes. If he keeps 23 bicycles, then, well, he would be better off than before. He would have 0.5 more of a bicycle. And that would leave him, well, 45 minus 23, 22 bicycles to trade with Mary. So I propose this trade. Mary trades nine cricket bats for 22 bicycles. And if that trade happened, we would be left with this pattern of consumption here that I have in the blue table on the bottom left-hand corner. Mary would have 11 cricket bats and 22 bikes because she traded nine of her 20 cricket bats for 22 bikes. 
Simon would have nine cricket bats. He traded those nine cricket bats for 22 bikes. So he's left with 23 bikes because he had 45. And what I hope you can see is that this trade puts both Mary and Simon's consumption ahead of their consumption when they didn't trade and when they didn't specialize for all of the goods produced. And we can see this quite clearly if we go back to the PPFs that I drew before, the bundle of consumption associated with Mary and Simon's post-trade consumption, uh, they're both outside the original PPF. And so that's it. It's a fairly um, fundamental argument in economics and it's one of the reasons why uh, we go on about comparative advantage and opportunity cost and trade and gains from trade um, and I hope that it helped. If it did, please like and subscribe. Hope you guys are keeping safe and happy.